the recording now. Please, Mark, let's start. Okay, good morning. Um, welcome to Austin. Like, it's the first time slot, so yeah, we get to kick this summit off, I guess. Um, so Alexia and I are here to talk about contributing to the success of OpenStack. Um, here's our pictures, in case you don't know what we look like. So I'm Mark. I'm an uh, engineering director for OpenStack at Red Hat. I've been uh, an open source developer for 15 years, so I'm here more on the kind of open source developer side of things. <coughs> yeah, and so uh, I, I am here to, to represent the, the, the work that we are doing to improve our organization. And I'm a long time uh, agile contributor. And uh, but we will speak a little bit more about this. Um, first, we will start with, uh, um, I will, I will have some trouble to get used to the, the, um, the clicker. That's interesting. Yes, the clicker is really awful. Okay. We will, we will. Um, yeah, just use the arrows, I think. Yeah. Uh, I just want to stop this. Oh, okay. If you are looking at the video, you can see that it was live. Okay. Um, and I would like to have the speaker notes. Also, we don't need the speaker or not. We need the speaker or not. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. We lose the speaker or not there. Okay. Um, sorry for that. There we go. It, it will be uh, really okay, as you can see. Uh, it's all working perfectly well. Oh, I can go back to my nice picture about introducing the, the raising ends survey. So it's the time you, you will be able to participate a little bit. Yes, you can. You can try no, okay. You haven't heard the question so, yet. The, the first <laughs> question was, uh, okay, who ever contributes to the OpenStack project? Okay. Thank you. Check so, whoever contributed to an open source project before OpenStack? So, you can see in the room that's, that's some long time contributors there. Um, who is there because they are working for a company and this company wants them to contribute to OpenStack? Okay, so there, there's not so much contributors on their spare time there. Okay, it's more. You are there because the, you, the company you are working with wants you to contribute to OpenStack. Or maybe it's the other way. You want to contribute to OpenStack and you find a, a company that wants to, <laughs> you to do it. It, it could work either way. Uh, who ever worked in an agile environment? That's great. Uh, we, we added uh, one more question there. What was my question? Oh, yes. It was like, was it a good experience? And actually, I'd ask that to both. Was it a good experience on the open source side, and was it a good experience on the agile side? So who found working on the open source projects in the past a good experience? Oh, that's cool. Very good. And how about agile projects or agile teams? Oh, that's great. Yeah, good. Everybody's had one Everybody's happy today. Yes. <laughs> that's really yeah. good. <laughs> OK. So agile is, th is this. If, if you think agile is really uh, do uh, several things at the same time and doing whatever you want, whenever you want, and changing always what you are doing. It's not necessarily that. It's a set of, it's a set of principles. And the, the collaboration is one thing that is really important there. And uh, it's really the collaboration between people, between individuals, to achieve a, great, a greater purpose. It's probably something that some people have some troubles to understand, but it's really that. And I'm sure you know that. Hmm. And I think the interesting thing about open source, when you look at it, again, we've got you know, Wikipedia definition here again. But I think also you should be thinking about what open source is in terms of a set of abstract ideas and principles, just like Agile is. And if you look at these two paragraphs, the first paragraph em emphasizes the license, right? So if you've got an open source license, you're doing open source. But the second part emphasizes more of the kind of collaboration and, and transparency and, and self-organization. And that's like that's if you're doing effective open source, right? That's if you really, really get open source. So you know, it's not just enough to check some boxes off when you're doing open source. You know? Mm. And I yeah. think that's the same for Agile. Yeah. 
And ob obviously, uh, I, uh, there's also people that have some trouble to understand this, but it, it can be okay. And if we look at the, the both things, we are working in communities, we are working on Agile and open source, and there's a lot of things that we are doing that are nearly the same. Obviously, there are things that are really different, but there are things that are nearly the same. And if you speak to an Agile contributor that is not doing open source, he will speak about a lot of things that are on this diagram. And so the opposite is also true, of course. And so I think, I think what we're trying to show here is if you think about all of the really abstract ideas behind open source and Agile, there's a lot of overlap here. And maybe Agile emphasizes some things, open source emphasizes some other things, but there, there's an awful lot in common here. <coughs> OK. So? Yes, so in the open source sense, I guess we talk an awful lot about community and, and building communities and you know diverse communities as the way of really you know, um, a, a achieving a better way of developing software. Um, the key thing for me, I think, about an effective community is, you know, uh, really um, strong trust-based relationships within the community between individuals. That's interesting because I would have said exactly the same if I look at a team, at several teams that are working together in an agile environment. Thing that really this it's the trust between individuals that is the key foundation of all this. Definitely the same thing. And if we look at the work that we are doing, oh, but maybe you don't you, you want to know what is it? Okay. Yeah, it's it's that yeah. chapeau. It, it's really a great drawing. You can see my drawing talents are really high. <laughs> but, and you can see that it's it's a hat because you can wear it on your really happy face, as you are all really happy, so it's a nice thing. And if we are speaking about ads there. Yeah, uh, basically, hats is the way I've, I've, I've always approached um, my work in the open source community, right? So it's, yes, you're employ employed by a company. In one sense, you wear what I think of as your corporate hat. I work for a company that Whereas red hats, but that's that's uh, that's another matter altogether. We don't. That's not why we use the term. But you also um, sometimes have to think about wearing your community hat. I think it was the the Apache project first kind of came up with this idea of thinking. And the idea is, you know, you need to switch contexts um, how you think about problems sometimes. So if you're approaching a uh, you know a project in the upstream community, you're wearing your upstream hat. But but sometimes you also need to think about with your red hat hat on or your corporate hat. So that's why some people are speaking about balancing their community or corporate uh, commitments, or balancing their uh, upstream or downstream responsibilities. Yeah, and this this can be even thought about in terms of balancing, um, you know, say work that's kind of directly driven by you know very immediate interests versus kind of the upstream um, might be more about your know, upstream responsibilities more about might be about the long term sustainability of the project, for example. So there's all sorts of balances going on here. And <coughs> this is probably the things that we are arguing about the most between Mark and I. Because when I look at how the team, a successful team is working, I say, okay, the, the, the successful team is taking some ideas and build a product based on the idea. And it's the collaboration between, between those individuals that create what we need. But it's not only that. It's also the idea that what we are building is, needs to satisfy someone. Mm -hmm. So we want to have this uh, feedback loop. We want to know what the users are thinking about using our product. And we want to have this feedback loop as soon as possible. And that's why we are trying to, to find some loops, the shortest loops that we can, to have this mm -hmm. feedback. And, uh, one thing that Alexi, um, one insight Alexi had as we were talking through this was, um, you know, if you think about many open source projects, and you know, I've been working on many open source projects, um, a lot of them, you know, we talk about scratching an itch, right? That's how you, you start a project, right? So you're the user, then you understand the needs of the user because you kind of represent the user. And, you know, there's this uh, achieving that, that direct feedback loop with the user is, is a little bit more easy. Um, in the context of something like OpenStack, I think 
many of us aren't necessarily scratching an itch. We're not necessarily working on software that we use day to day ourselves. And so how do we establish a real connection between the developers working on the project and the people who are really using it? And the, the cool thing is if we look at who are the users, they are probably users, internal users of companies that are contributing to OpenStack or customers of those companies, partners of those companies. So we can say that when we are wearing our corporate hat, we are in, in a way proxy for the users of the software. So it's quite a cool thing to bring on the table for the, the community. Yeah, if, and if you just came from the keynote hall this morning, you saw um, you know, many kind of users represented up there, like, I don't know, Volkswagen and AT&T and Betfair. Um, you know, many of these um, companies are attempting to contribute to the project in various different ways, but for the vast majority, um, kind of their interests and their needs and their, their requirements are being represented by, um, you know, companies that they have a, a kind of vendor customer relationship with. And it's, it's the employees of those companies who are then kind of acting as proxies for the requirements of, of those end users. <coughs> and where, are, when and where my community at, I can challenge those users that are coming to with their ideas of how to use the software and saying, OK, but you want to do this, but it's not necessarily the good way of doing it. Or maybe you are trying to use a product that is not really the good product to do what you are trying to achieve. Or maybe I can say, wow, that's an interesting idea. I, I didn't see the things like that, and I didn't think that users can have those kind of troubles. No, that's interesting. And so this idea is to try to reconcile those two ads. And uh, maybe you can speak about a, a concrete example around that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, there, there's, there, there's, for me, I've always had this very, very strong sense of wearing those two different hats. So when I'm wearing my community hat, I'm really trying to build that close um, relationship based on trust with my peers within the community, right? Like that's the team that I'm thinking about being a part of. Um, but I'm also conscious that, you know, I'm, I'm working for a company. I'm trying to represent the needs of those users. I'm understanding where those users are coming from. Um, and I'm trying to reconcile those two views in a way that's, you know, works for both the community and works for both the company I'm, I'm working for and genuinely works for both, right? You're not trying to compromise your commitment to the community and you're also not trying to comp compromise kind of what your, your company is doing. In the context of Nova and NFV, um, you know, we had many um, customers coming to talk to us about requirements that they had for, for how to do NFV, how to transform telcos with, um, with OpenStack. And, you know, initially I thought, this has nothing to do with OpenStack. Go away, use a different different product. The more I understood, though, more, the more I, I talked to them, the more I realized that they were really trying to do Elastic Cloud, but they had some you know, really interesting requirements around deterministic performance and, and such things. And as you start really understanding those requirements, you understand a way that they could be implemented in OpenStack in a way that actually makes sense for OpenStack, too. So like high performance flavors or tagging devices with labels and all this kind of stuff. Really cool features generically for OpenStack but satisfies the use of this use case. And so I think Red Hat developers wearing both of those hats, trying to represent those two views, actually came up with some really, really nice solutions for Nova that made sense for, both for the project and for you know, these users that are trying to use OpenStack. So probably when the, the community, when the people inside the community are really supportive of your ideas, you, you are bringing a new ID and uh, it's definitely something that will help your internal users, your customers, or your partners, and you are bringing this on the table, and the others are really supportive. You can say, okay, all is doing really well. But sometimes they are really <sighs> hostile. And you can say, okay, that's all. How can I say that? Maybe they are not doing good in the community. They are not supporting my ideas. It's the others that have the problem, right? Or maybe, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe I'm not doing the thing in the good way. So it's a strong signal that I'm not doing the thing in the right way, I think. So we need to use that because we can refine what our internal users, what our customers, what our partners want, see, using all the knowledge of all the, the community. And if we speak about this at the beginning of the cycle, in the 
in the IDs generation. It's something, but it's the same process, the same benefits all along the cycle, even for the implementation of something or at the end for the, the use of a feature or something like that. And that's why the diversity factor is so important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> you know, if you think back to what I talked about there in terms of effective open source, right? It's it's a community based on diverse views, diverse interests, and it's that diversity of of of, of people trying to achieve different things and trying to figure out a, a way of making that all work together. That's you know that's really where a lot of the value of of um, OpenStack comes from, and that's why in the I forgot what we call this. What do we call it's this the thing? In maturity. No, the the website. Um. It's I'd a project explorer or something like that? I don't yeah. remember how it's Anyway, called. it's representing the maturity and adoption rate and, and, and various aspects of the OpenStack projects. But one of the key parts that it's representing in the maturity is just how diverse the community behind, uh, behind the project is. Because you know, we really see that that's um, you know, important to the project in terms of you know, its ability to kind of develop great software, but also the, the longevity of the software. Is that this software going to be around for a long term? And if there's lots of diverse kind of interests involved, then there's a better chance. <coughs> okay, so all we need to do is to see the, those ads as one ad we need to, to wear and to reconcile those two ads in a way that will bring values to the community and will bring values to the, the, the company and their users. So we can benefit of both. Absolutely. I just thought of one word as you were talking about hostility there. I thought about empathy, right? When you, when you have to reconcile these two hats and you're getting, say, negative feedback from the community, you really need to put on your upstream hat and really try and understand where that negative feedback is coming from. You can't just wear your corporate hat and go, these guys are getting in my way. Stop getting in my way. There's, obvious, there's often good reasons for that negative feedback. And in the case of Nova and NFE, the feedback was actually, why are you guys adding all of these crazy new features when we actually just need to make Nova work. We need to improve the core functionality of the software before adding new features. And to a large extent, that was actually very good feedback. And um, I, I guess the, re the way of reconciling those two views are we need to do both, right? We need to be working on, on improving Nova core functionality, but um, let's also figure out how to add these new features. <coughs> OK. And all is happening in one really flow, one information and workflow that is really smooth, as you all know, as contributors. OK. Yeah, there are some people that are really saying, yes, yes, it's working well. It's really a, a flow that is really working well. And if you look at when you are working and you, there's one company, you have your nice hat, you have IDs, you are working with a team and you are building great product. And it's really nice and it's really working well. It's really simple to handle this information and workflow. And when you are working with others, it's really this friendly thing that will bring the best ideas and build great products. That's really, really nice. But is it really? When I see some companies, and we are all struggling with this sometimes uh, within our company, and they are trying to organize the work of the teams that are working internally. And those teams are working in a larger, big team like the OpenStack project. And it's two information and workflow that, are, that we are trying to assemble together. And it's not necessarily easy. And some people are really in between two things, are uh, trying to say, OK, I, I will wear my community hat, and that's the only hat I will wear. And uh, some others are trying to do both, but are already struggling. And some others are saying, OK, so I will wear my, com my corporate hat, and that's all. And each time, we are not able to, to, wear, to, to reconcile those, the two, we are losing some value somewhere. So how can we improve that? And it, it's really, I, I really like this picture because you know, for a lot of my career to date, I have to admit, my focus has been more on creating that effective sense of that team in the middle there. So if you imagine that's an upstream project, making that a really um, 
efficient, diverse project that, that's really kind of kicking ass and stuff. Um, and you know, the more kind of corporate teams involved, the better. Um, but if you're looking at this from the perspective then of trying to build really, really strong teams within a company that can, that can really, um, you know, be an effective part of that upstream team, but also kind of have a, a really good sense internally of, of a team too. Um, it's a struggle trying to create two different concepts of teams that are both both working well and people being a part of th both of those teams. <coughs> and, and we can see that we are not alone to have those kind of problems. People who are working on storyboard are trying to foster cross-project cross collaboration and are trying to give people a view of the several projects to solve one business problems, for example. And people that are working in the product working group are trying to do nearly the same thing. So we are not alone to have this kind of, pro uh, this kind of problem. Mm. So what we are trying to achieve internally is to uh, give the, the focus, give the, the possibility of, to people to focus on one set of business problems. Yeah, and, and I guess you know, it goes back to that picture of, of teams again. Um, you know, I think what we found when we emphasized more kind of the notion of being a member of, of the upstream team and kind of um, you know, building teams that were really built around um, you know, emphasizing that, um, you know, it, it, we, we kind of struggled to build this notion of really owning, um, you know, having close relationship with users and having um, kind of ownership of the kind of end to end delivery of, of users needs. Um, so, you know, getting a patch merged to Nova, for example, doesn't solve everything to do with a, a particular user need. There's a whole bunch of steps that needs to happen afterwards. And how do we really um, emphasize that notion? And maybe we can <coughs> speak about the building those focus teams. Uh, we will need to, to think about the way we will uh, uh, be able to collaborate with, with, those, with, with those people that we will work on different technology. It will be cross-technology teams. And um, how we will need to reconsider the way the, the technology is working, for example, with the, those ideas about the splitting the stacks or the composable world thing to, to help those teams to be independent enough to yeah. be able to focus on one, one so, set of so business Maybe problems. to make this concrete again, to go back to, say, my Nova example, where we've, we've added um, some features to Nova that allows you to create, um, say, high-performance flavors in a cloud. And for those high-performance flavors to be used to run um, what we call VNFs, virtual network functions. So we've landed that code in Nova. But how, when, the, when one of our customers goes to take one of our, our um, products, or when they go to use our product, how do they actually go deploying compute nodes that can host these flavors, creating those flavors, um, you know, helping users understand how to use them? And it's everything from kind of changes in our packaging, changes in our in our deployment tool in the form of triple O heat templates, um, documentation, all of that, all the way through. And what we want to create in our in our compute team, the, the team that's really focused on these kind of use cases, is not just let's get this um, patch merged into Nova, but how do we, you know. How do we really make sure that customers really see the value of that? So how do we tackle the, the problem end, end to end? Um, and one of the cases for that, um, I mentioned triple O heat templates there, for example. Um, right now, triple O heat templates is like one big playbook for how to de deploy OpenStack. Um, and it's maintained by our triple O team. And what we're trying to do is create the sense that actually our compute team can have complete ownership of um, they're part of those triple, heat, uh, triple O heat templates. So that's why the team for, is splitting apart these triple O heat templates to kind of create more kind of independence amongst our teams at Red Hat um, for, for kind of delivering functionality to, to users. So you already mm -hmm. speak about that. I did? Yep. Jump the gun. Sorry. No, no, but it's, it's really great. Uh, I, um, I thought what, when we speak about that, you, you, you were speaking about back in the day, the open source project. Yes, so um, I've just talked about triple O heat templates. And, and as we were thinking through this, you know, we thought about the example that you know, back in the day with open source projects, maybe 15 years ago, where you know, projects were typically d deployed on, on one machine, um, it was really operators that took control of making it easier to deploy software or install software on machines by creating packages. Um, but as things evolved over the time, 
at least internally at Red Hat, the teams that were working on the code also took responsibility for the, the, the packaging of the software, how to install the software. And we're trying to take that step a little bit further to this distributed system now, to you know, these teams being responsible for the code, for the packaging of the code, but also how the code gets deployed um, to, to really create that end-to-end -end sense of ownership. And upgraded. Yes. <laughs> So what we what we want what we want to achieve with this idea of focus teams it's uh, have focus team internally inside Red Hat so we are able to to give this clarity and to bring this clarity to the OpenStack project to say okay we are trying in the next cycle to to solve this kind of business problems in those focus areas so we will uh, be able to say okay we want to achieve that and it will involve a lot of cross project collaboration and if people can see that they have the same kind of business problems that we have, we, we can join our effort on, on this. And they can also uh, bring those kind of clarity of what kind of business problems they are trying to solve. And uh, also have and foster this cross-project collaboration mm -hmm. that we need now to have. Or to think of it another way, maybe inside Red Hat, we're, we're thinking of our teams now more more like agile teams where, where the, the, the team is kind of self-sufficient in terms of has all the, 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 the skills it needs to deliver a certain set of functionality, including a product owner who understands users' needs. Um, so that's our, our, our teams at Red Hat. But there's also the challenge of upstream. How do we create teams upstream that either do cross-project collaboration and, and have that clarity of focus and understand the problems they're trying to solve, or are kind of similarly focused teams within a bigger kind of project. Um, and, and these are kind of challenges that are, you know, they've been long-term challenges in the OpenStack project. And, and I, I think it's going to be really interesting for us to tackle also the, the notion of our internal teams and that clarity of focus, but also um, a better sense of, of focused teams upstream. And I think we, you, you have summed up the, the wall ID. Yes, so for me, 15 years doing open source, I, I've always really um, used this, this, way, this notion of two hats and trying to ha reconcile the view of two hats to, to really help me be effective in my, in my work. Um, I think Ale Alexi is now opening me to the, you know, the real value of, of Agile being around clarity of, of what the team is doing and, and the value it's delivering to its users and, and, and how we're going to bring that um, to teams working on, on this open source project, I guess. <coughs> Thank you. That's all that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was us. And we have time for questions. And that was you. And yes, we have time for questions. But we didn't plan to have someone in the audience to ask the first question. Mm. Dave Neary is always good for ah, a question. Thank you, Dave. You need to go to the mic because I, I'm not able to repeat your question. <laughs> I don't speak English, as you know. I can, uh, you I can, can ask speak in French, uh, yeah? English with a French accent. Ooh, yeah, very good. Really very good. Um, so how do you avoid a tragedy of the commons when people are wearing community and, and company hats? How do you avoid, I mean, different companies are going to have different interests when they align around a community. How do you avoid those competing interests polluting and, and poisoning the pool? That, that's, a, uh, that's a really good point. What we've said is when you have competing, uh, competing needs or competing interests inside the community, I think it's bringing some value to the community and it's also bringing values to the company. And I, I think if you are not able to negotiate on what you, are, what you really need as a company, if you, are, if you are not able to see that if the, the rest of the community is really hostile to what you are bringing, there's some reason behind it. So you need to reconsider what you are bringing. Mm -hmm. So you need to, to, to be able to negotiate and to, to be able to reconsider what you are bringing. And I think it, it works both ways. For, for me, the tragedy of the commons with, with open source projects is where, yes, you've all of these interests coming into the project, but there's this notion of kind of, you know, really critical interest of the project that isn't a high priority for anyone, right? Like, it's a, if you put on your community hat, it's really, really high priority for, the, for your community hat, but no one, when they put on their corporate hat, really thinks of it as a priority, and everybody assumes someone else is going to do it. Um, and that's a real challenge, and that's why I, I really take this notion of a community hat seriously for, for developers at Red Hat, because 
it's easy for us to miss those things that are really important to the project. It's easy for us to not prioritize those kind of things when we take a look at, at features that are important to their customers. But like that kind of stuff is to really, really critically important to the long-term sustainability of the project. And to give an example of that, when I started working on OpenStack, um, I think that one of the things that I identified as, as a problem for the long-term success of OpenStack was all of these projects basically copying and pasting each other's code, not sharing code for simple things like um, configuration files and stuff like that. So I, I started the Oslo project. That wasn't a business priority of Red Hat, right? There's no product manager coming along and saying it's really important to customer X, Y, and Z to do this, but we understood that it was important to the long-term success of the project. And, uh, but that's with our community hat on, but able to influence like, people at Red Hat to ensure that that got prioritized. Um, so it's a real challenge, um, but you know, you, we have to figure out our way through it. <clears throat> yes, please. Ah, oh, yes. We want to have a, a recording of your voice. So um, I guess the question would be, um, what would you do to model this in a project that's largely driven by m one company? Like, you know, I think the, you know, I think what you portrayed up here is upstream communities that have like, you know, diverse stakeholders, but how can things go wrong when it's largely one company? I think when, when, a, when a project has not yet achieved the, the corporate diversity, um, it's one of the, the maturity metrics of the, the OpenStack community, um, it means that there's a problem there because there's, it's not attracting other users from other companies or other customers of those, this company and so on. So it, it can be the root cause of this could be really uh, on a, a lot of different places. But there's probably a strong signal there to listen, to, to understand why, and to, to, to really uh, conduct this analysis of why it's happening. Yeah, for, for, me, for me, it's a... And I know it's a problem for us. For, for me, the, the metric of corporate diversity is a nice shortcut to thinking about this, right? But you can have a project that is dominated by, by one company, but diversity of interest and like the, the project to be self-governing and really open and really transparent and really, um, you know, that, that is easy for anyone to come along. So Dan... In, was the, the triple OPTL in the last cycle, and this, this is where he's come, question he's coming from. The majority of people working on triple O are Red Hat developers, um, with contributions from um, various partners that are integrating technologies in and, and other users. But we have created the project in such a way that it's not just one team at Red Hat working on this project. It's a, a variety of teams. We're welcoming that diversity of interests even within Red Hat to the project, but also externally. And we're setting up the structure and the governance of the project to to ensure that it really is an open project that anyone can collaborate to. So, you know, it doesn't look great from the diversity, um, the corporate diversity metric point of view, but we still value diversity of interests within the project and, and enabling the, our, setting up the project to enable that kind of diversity to happen. <clears throat> okay. So, one more question. Um, so, do you have any problem that you have been struggling to solve for a long time but haven't been able to solve successfully to your satisfaction? Something that you can talk about? Uh, personally or? No, about <laughs> <laughs> Anything related to what you just <laughs> talked about. Um, my mind is on triple O because Dan just talked about triple O. We're trying to solve the problem of um, deploying OpenStack, right? Um, but beyond just deploying OpenStack, um, deploying OpenStack with many different um, deployment scenarios. So, you know, the, all the various different ways you can deploy OpenStack, all the various different technologies you can uh, deploy. We're trying to solve for a lot of different use cases. Um, you know, people who are um, deploying, you know, a small POC cloud to people who are doing a, deploying a massive big um, uh, kind of customized cloud. Um, it's a, it's a real challenge, and I think it's a challenge you know that we're trying to tackle in the Triple O project. But I think it's it's a challenge that is something that the OpenStack project has an opportunity to collaborate on more um, to solve together, as opposed to individual companies trying to to solve it on their own. Um, 
So the reason we created the, the, the Triple O project in this way was to try and generate more collaboration upstream around something that's holding OpenStack back, I guess, and, and there's a real opportunity to collaborate there. So the problem that I think we've been trying to solve for a while is how to create more collaboration within the OpenStack project around how OpenStack should be deployed and build more consensus around what OpenStack should look like in real life, not in DevStack, but in real life, for us all to collaborate on some consensus for, for what that looks like. <coughs> and if you think about the, uh, the uh, installation of a feature or the upgrade of a feature on uh, when the cloud is really running, there's, I think the, it's uh, some problems that we share with others in the OpenStack community. Something else? It's now. Mm -hmm. Okay then. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, if you have some feedbacks, and uh, you can use uh, Twitter, or you can use our emails, or you can use. Uh, we are. We'll be. We'll. We've, we will be there all the week, so please uh, give us some feedback. It's really important and valuable, and so we can we can contribute together to to all that. And where is your next talk? In ballroom C on the first level. On okay. yes, I need to go now. In ten minutes, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.